Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth. On Now You Know. You can help support our channel by heading over to ecoware.us where you'll find new designs every week. In fact, I'm wearing a new one from our friends at Root Del Sol. So mm. if you want to go check out this design, head over to the link down in the show notes below. We carbon offset the production, the shipping, and the life cycle of every product. And we plant a tree for every order, so it's carbon negative. This episode of In-Depth is sponsored by Omaze. Win a custom Tesla Model X performance and $20,000. This Model X is customized by the world-class team at Unplugged Performance. Stand out from the crowd with upgrades including 22-inch black wheels and carbon fiber spoiler, a head-turning matte white exterior wrap, and red leather accents on the inside. And score $20,000 to spend on anything but gas because the shipping and taxes are all paid for. Donate $10 and you are entered for a chance to win, and every donation supports the Juju Foundation. The Juju Foundation is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the support of youth initiatives, including Juju's Great Bicycle Giveaway, which provides bicycles and locks to underserved youth around the country and in American Samoa during the holiday season. How great that you can donate to a charity like this and potentially win a car like this. Yeah, with the bells and whistles included, I don't even know what you're going to spend that $20,000 on. So head on over to amaze.com slash NYK or click the link in the show notes for your chance to win a Tesla and $20,000 cash. And we're brought to you by abetterrootplanner.com. If you have a trip with multiple waypoints and you need to charge your EV along the way, abetterrootplanner.com makes it super easy. Click the link down below to get a 30-day free trial to their premium app. And we're sponsored by our friends at the Solar Powered Hotels in Schaumburg, Illinois, the Fairfield Inn and Suites by Marriott, and the Town Place Suite Hotel right next door. They're both connected, and they're both solar powered. So during our Battery Day coverage and subsequent episodes about our take on what Battery Day will mean for Tesla, we talked about the Osborne Effect. The Osborne Effect, for those of you who didn't watch our previous videos, is named after the Osborne Computer Company, which back in 1982 had the Osborne One computer. And when the founder of the company, Adam Osborne, announced several upcoming models and new features, it basically tanked the company. Yeah, because when you heard about the new features coming out, the bigger hard drive, faster CPU, more RAM, it made the regular old Osborne One look less sexy, less enticing. So I'll just wait till they come out with the new one. But that meant that sales dried up and the company ran out of money and actually went bankrupt a couple of years later in 1983. So I think that we've uh, revealed a big problem. Tesla has invoked the Osborne effect. What are you talking about? Well, Elon revealed all this great new tech that will be coming in 12 to 36 months. For instance, the 4680 battery, which will be in the new version of the Model Y, which will be produced at the Berlin Gigafactory and then subsequently produced at the other factories years later. Oh, I see. So you're worried that uh, US and Chinese customers will want that Model Y, and so they'll wait to buy a Model Y for a couple of years until Texas and Shanghai Gigafactories are producing them. Exactly. So sales of the Model Y in the US and China will dry up completely. I got to call my broker and sell all of my Tesla stock. <laughs> hang, hang on. Hang what? On. Before you get like all worked up, let's let's talk about a very important distinction. Distinction? Yeah. There are two kinds of consumers, regular and experts. You see, with the Osborne computer back in 1981, who were the potential customers? Anyone who's in the market for a computer. Right. And you weren't alive back then, so uh, you may not get this. But in 1981, it was the very beginning of the home computer market. Uh, what do you mean? What? OK, so my dad bought one of the first personal computers, the TRS-80 by Radio Shack back in the early 80s. And here's what it could do for you right out of the box. Practically nothing. What are you talking about? Computers can do all sorts of stuff. You can uh, write d documents on them. You can browse the Internet. You can edit YouTube videos. You can No, no, well, no. In 1981, there was no Internet for all practical purposes, at least not for the average consumer. And there was no video editing on a computer. My dad had to write the actual programs for the computer to make it do anything. Wh uh, why, why didn't he just buy some al applications or some kind of app store. Yeah, there was no app store. There was no software stores. You, you basically, there was no software yet because there were no home computers. So I remember he wrote like a game for it and he wrote like a word processing program for it. But other than that, there was really, there was no programs. It didn't do anything. Okay. So I don't understand. What does this have to do with your distinctions? Okay. Well, my dad was an expert, right? The average person was not buying a computer back then 
because they didn't do anything useful yet. Take a look at this chart. Mm -hmm. In 1981, there were only about 1,400 personal computers sold in the U.S. Wow, only 14,000. No, no, 1,400. 1,400 computers sold in the entire U.S. Now, compare that to 1.5 billion of these computers sold just last year. This tiny little computer is infinitely more powerful than the TRS-80 we had in 1980. Okay, so your dad was an expert who bought a computer that almost no one else had in the whole world and was writing code for it that apparently no one else had the time to do. Uh, so what? Okay, well, think about the Osborne effect. What does it rely on? I guess it relies on the consumer knowing a lot about the product that's out and a lot about the product that's coming out. Exactly. My dad followed this stuff. He read the magazines. He might have even gone to one of these computer trade shows. And these computers weren't cheap. The Osborne one, it cost $2,200 in 1981. That's $6,300 in today's dollars. Oh, I see. So he'd want to do some serious research before plunking down that kind of money. Right. So the market for personal computers in 1981 was made up almost entirely of experts, people who knew a lot about computers. So now let's talk about computers today. OK, let's say you're looking to buy a new computer for work or school and you probably have some features you want and maybe a budget. Yeah, like I might need a laptop and be able to use the Internet and do Zoom calls and it'd be lightweight and my budget is, you know, uh, six hundred dollars. Maybe I'd go as high as a thousand. All right. So do you spend countless hours researching what Dell and HP and Asus and countless others are developing and what will be on the market next year? I mean, some people might if they wanted the latest and greatest, but I just need a new computer for school. So I don't care what's coming out next year. Exactly. The Osborne effect plays a greater role when the buying public is highly educated about a particular product. But in your case, you don't really care. You just need a computer. Right. And I'm not at the cutting edge, so I don't need to have the most cutting edge specs. I just need something that's pretty common at this point. And I don't need to like I'm not excited by something else because I know it'll just be more expensive. So basically, not everyone in the market for a car has done a ton of research first. Exactly. If you're thinking of buying an EV, you being the host of a YouTube channel that talks about nothing but EVs, you know the minutia, the inside and outs of practically every EV. So knowing the 4680s are going into the Model Y made in Berlin, well, maybe that might influence your decision. Yeah, I mean, I might wait a couple of years if I wanted that tech. But most car buyers spend about nine hours of research on their next car purchase, which means they probably aren't going to watch two hours of live battery day coverage and an hour long now, you know, show on what Tesla has planned. Right. So they just look up the basics, the prices, the ranges, the basic reviews, whatever. And I would argue that most people who are buying a Tesla now are way less geeky about the brand than the early adopters of even a couple years ago. Yeah, I mean, when we waited to sign up for the Model 3 back in 2016, practically everyone in line with us was talking about really technical stuff. You know, what kind of batteries might it have? Some of those people even had built their own EVs, right. um, you know, basically converted some old car using lead acid batteries and some motors that they you know, were able to scrounge together. So they really knew what they were talking about. Right. And now we're seeing firsthand that many new Tesla owners today barely know how to use their cars. Yeah, I mean, we get tons of correspondence all the time of people who are, have never supercharged before, who are afraid to do it. We were down at today's collision the other day talking to Bobby Cobb, and he was saying that a lot of new owners of the Model Y don't know how to use the sensor cam, which means that their parked car gets into an accident and they don't have any way to review the footage and find out who the perpetrator was. Right. They don't even know some of the valuable features of their cars, and yet they bought them. Right. All right. So I get it. So a huge percentage of new Tesla owners just know the basics about Tesla. It goes fast. It's electric. And therefore, they don't think about the 4680 cells or don't even know about them. Yeah. And this isn't just Tesla owners. A study of ICE car drivers showed that 41 percent of drivers couldn't identify the engine of a car when presented with images. Wow. Right. Because, I mean, if you're watching the show, then you are kind of an expert. I mean, you know way more than the average consumer does about how Teslas work. Right. So you might be affected by the Osborne effect when it comes to 4680 cells and Model Ys. But most consumers won't have a clue and certainly won't factor this into their car buying decision. They'll be buying a Model Y based off the price and the features. And probably because they experienced one from a friend or relative who owns one. So you're saying that I shouldn't go sell all my Tesla stock? I wouldn't sell any. But we had talked about how internal combustion engine car manufacturers are affected by the Osborne effect. They are. 
Ford and GM, for instance, can't tell their customers specifics about upcoming EV models they're working on because that will start to erode their existing market sales of ICE cars. But then why is Tesla immune from the Osborne effect? Good question. Okay, so most people will understand that switching from gasoline to electricity to power car is a big deal, whether they understand how it works or the benefits. Right. I mean, they understand it's a huge shift in technology. But most people don't know that you should stay away from the 2003 to 2007 Ford Super Duty pickup truck. What, 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 why should I not buy a 2003 to 2007 Super Duty Ford pickup truck? What, why? Well, because that's when Ford started using the notoriously bad Navistar diesel six liter engine that thousands of Ford owners discovered was poorly made. Right. I mean, how would I be expected to know that? Right. That's my point. Unless you were a mechanic or a car guru, you wouldn't know that. You might have had friends and family who owned a Ford pickup truck and thought you'd be safe buying a Ford, not knowing that that particular engine was a lemon. Okay, I get it. So most people know that Tesla is an awesome brand and that the Model Y is an SUV that might fit their budget and needs. They don't need to know about the batteries and stuff. Exactly. Tesla is always going to be innovating and coming out with better and better cars, but the average consumer just cares about their needs and their budget right now. Whereas Ford and GM do have a problem with the Osborne effect because... Okay, picture picture this. Okay. You're a Ford F-150 pickup truck owner. Okay. I'm a Ford F-150 pickup truck owner. And your truck is getting on in years. It's a little worse for wear. And you've been thinking about buying a new one. Okay, I'm thinking about buying a new Ford F-150. I'm with you so far. Okay, so you go down to your local Ford dealer or you do some online research. And in your research, you hear about Ford is coming out with an all-electric version of the F-150 in 2022? Okay, I see. So I hear about this new electric version and I'm like, why are they making an electric version? Is this better than my gas version? Why are they doing it now? That's new. New means better. What else is electric? Tesla. I've heard Tesla. Tesla has a good brand. Okay, so maybe so then maybe I might do some research on electrics and I might find out that they are cheaper to run and they require less maintenance. Right. See, you're you're kind of stuck. I mean, until you get some answers, you don't really want to buy the new ICE version of the F-150. Right, because I'm also now thinking, will Ford stop making engines? And if they do get out of the engine business, will you even be able to get parts? Yeah, it kind of just stops me cold. And I think I should wait at least until I check out this Ford electric F-150 in person and get some more answers. I'm going to make my existing F-150 last a couple more years. What just happened to Ford's F-150 pickup truck sales? Their best-selling, most profitable division. It got stopped cold by the Osborne effect. But now I want you to be a new potential Tesla customer. I am a Tesla customer. Okay, not Jesse, the co-host of Tesla Time News, but a regular person who just recently even heard of Tesla. Maybe you saw your neighbor driving one and you asked them some questions. Okay, so I'm a newbie Tesla potential customer. Okay, I'm going to test you actually. Ready? Uh, uh, what? Okay. Okay, where is the Nevada Gigafactory located? Nevada. Okay, beginner's luck. Which has more energy density, the 18650 or the 2170? I mean, I don't even know that. <laughs> Good. All right, you passed. Okay, so, okay, newbie Tesla potential customer. Here's the big question. Would you rather purchase this Tesla Model Y today or wait two plus years until it has 4680s and a rigid unicast construction? Wait two years? I need a car now. Good. You passed the test. See, the average car buyer is in the market for a car for about 96 days. That means that even on the upper end of double or triple that, most car buyers aren't going to wait three years. Even people who know about Battery Day aren't that likely to wait if they need a car. OK, but I waited almost three years for my Model 3. Well, you're a very specific case. Well, that, that's true. I mean, I, I waited in line in March of 2016 to put my deposit down for the Model 3, along with about 300,000 other reservation holders. And that was before the Model 3 was unveiled. You had to wait to buy it. Right. There was no other car with that range in my budget except the Bolt, which was missing a bunch of features for me, like supercharging. But that will not be the case for the 4680s in the Model Y. There's an alternative. You can buy a Model Y right now. Yeah, I pulled the trigger on the first Model 3 that fit my budget. If I could have had one sooner, I would have done it. So that was kind of a reverse Osborne effect, if you will. It affected the traditional auto manufacturers since you waited to buy your Model 3. Would it really be a reverse Osborne effect? Well, OK, well, maybe a better name for it would be the Tesla effect, because what happened was you waited to buy a product and that hurt actually all the other manufacturers of that product. 
didn't really hurt Tesla. That's true. I mean, if we go back to the Osborne computer company, they unveiled something that hurt them. Uh, when Tesla unveiled the Model 3, they unveiled something that hurt their competitors. And so the people who are waiting for the product were their own customers. You know, there wasn't like, oh, people from the iPhone were waiting to buy the Osborne 2 or whatever. So Tesla is a uh, in a different situation than the Osborne computer company. Uh, there is a large existing market of car manufacturers. Right, you hit on a very important point, which is that you might be wondering, well, can you give us an example of the Osborne effect in recent years with car companies? No, we can't, you know why? Because car companies don't release anything that great coming up. They say, next year's model is here and it has another cup holder. And you're not going to hold off your purchase based on some cup holder or Bluetooth offering. Well, and even then, they usually only talk about the features of a car when it is already on dealers' lots. Right. They don't say, in three years, we're going to have amazing technology in our cars. Because then you might go, hey, I think I might wait. And so that kind of landscape of you know completely avoiding the Osborne effect... Uh, open themselves wide open for Tesla to come in and swoop down and attack them with the Tesla effect, right. saying we are going to have awesome technology in their case in three years. But of course, I was in no position to go buy a Model S. So the Model 3 for me was the car. I wanted that car and I couldn't really afford any other EVs of that caliber. So I just had to kind of wait and I tried to wait as long as I could. And what happened to you when you were that potential Ford F-150 buyer? I heard about electric and I went to the biggest game in town, Tesla. And that's how this is becoming the Tesla effect, because as you begin to learn about electrics, you have to almost by default learn about Tesla. And once you start learning about Tesla, you begin to see like, oh, they're coming out with a pickup truck, too. Maybe I should wait to check that one out. Right. It's sort of like if you had never heard of computers before and I told you about computers and you're like, oh, I need to go look up some computer stuff. I don't even know how you'd do that without computers, but let's say you go down to the library. What would you find? A lot of stuff on Microsoft and Apple. Those would be the, the computers that you would be learning about. There wouldn't be a lot of talk about, you know, the Commodore 64 very much uh, aside from a small footnote. So, but getting back to Tesla, you know, for people who are worried that the Osborne effect is going to kick in here and that Tesla is shooting themselves in the foot by telling us about the 4680s, uh, there is a great alternative, which is to buy a Model Y now and start driving it. Exactly. On battery day, Elon didn't discuss any marketable features. When Elon talked about the 4680 and the die cast construction, those topics don't translate directly into anything that a normal consumer would interact with. Tesla cars already drive well and they have rigid construction. So whether or not they have larger cells or better anodes, it doesn't really matter to the average driver. And that's not to say that these things won't have an impact on performance or features. It's just that Tesla hasn't told us about any of those potential impacts. And so the average consumer and heck, even the expert doesn't know what those things might be or if there will be a difference at all. And that's why we aren't worried that people are going to wait for three years to buy a car that they can buy right now. So you're not worried about the Osborne effect affecting Tesla sales? Nope. In fact, just the opposite. The opposite? I think the Osborne effect is going to kill ICE sales in the next couple of years as their customers learn that the future is electric and Tesla is going to benefit. So I think it's kind of amazing that we're still talking about this Osborne effect thing. It's this company that went out of business uh, back in the 80s. I think that the Tesla effect is going to um, kind of dwarf the, the Osborne effect as we go forward because people are going to start thinking about, oh, that's just like what Tesla did to the auto manufacturers. Uh, of course, they're different things. But I think that this is going to be the more popular example. Yeah. I think the footnote in the Wikipedia entry will say, you know, the Tesla effect starting in the early 2020s started to put ice manufacturers out of business, namely Ford and GM. Thank you so much for watching this episode of In-Depth. We hope you enjoyed it. We come out with In-Depth every single week. It comes out on Friday. Tesla Time News comes out on Monday. And you can head over to our Patreon to get lots of other bonuses and exclusive stuff. Uh, we have the Patreon bonus story for just a buck a month. And we have our new Investor Club for 10 bucks a month where we have a Slack and monthly meetings uh, where we're talking to actual heads of companies and stuff like that. So yeah. if you're interested, please head over to our Patreon and check it out. It's patreon.com slash now you know. Thanks so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.